Just a quick one, thank you so much for a thousand subscribers. I've put a couple of Amazon gift codes hidden in the video, so good luck. When was the last time you played Boom Beach? Yeah, unless you're one of the few active Boom Beach players left, chances are it's been a long, long time. Since its global release in early 2014, the game always stood in the shadows of Clash of Clans and before long several other Supercell games. On the App Store, it's currently 174th in the charts for strategy games and the story is pretty much the same on Google Play. Despite amassing over 100 million downloads over the 10 plus years it's been out, the game is in a pretty sketchy situation and the few remaining players are left wondering what the fate of Boom Beach will be. In the last 30 days alone, another 170,000 players have quit the game and YouTubers and streamers abandoned the game long ago. Last month on Twitch, the game reached just 123 peak viewers. The game's lost almost all of its interest, and at this point there is no chance of a comeback. I mean, take a look at this Google Trends graph comparing Brawl Stars Clash of Clans and Boom Beach. That red line at the bottom, that's Boom Beach. It's never been even close to as popular as Supercell's other games, even on release. So where exactly did Boom Beach go wrong, and what is going to happen to Supercell's least popular game? In my opinion, Boom Beach was destined to fail pretty much from the beginning. Being Supercell's third global release, it had big shoes to fill. At the time, both Heyday and Clash of Clans were genre-defining games at the top of the charts, so whatever Supercell dropped next had very high expectations. Clearly seeing the success of a multiplayer raid-based casual strategy game as being a lucrative niche, Supercell decided Boom Beach was going to be the next big thing. I remember when it came out and we were talking about it at school. When my friend told me about it and tried to explain the game, he said to me that it's just Clash of Clans with boats. So I downloaded the game that afternoon and gave it a try, and yeah, at first glance, it is pretty much Clash of Clans with boats. But I quit the game within around a week of playing at the time for two main reasons. Firstly, you can only attack from one direction. Now, I know Dysfunctional covered this in his video about Boom Beach a few weeks ago, shout out to him by the way, but I definitely fell into the camp of thinking this was a pretty bad idea for the game. I just remember it feeling like a downgrade from Clash of Clans, and attacks, especially at lower levels, felt super repetitive. It kind of felt like it didn't really matter where you put your troops, since they always had to go up the beach. And sure, you had flares to direct troops, but it still didn't feel near as fun on release as Clash of Clans. And that was another big issue. The game was obviously released in a state nowhere near as playtested or well thought out as Clash of Clans, which had been around for a long time already, so Supercell were fighting an uphill battle from the start. Additionally, I think they decided to make a number of very large changes simply to differentiate the game from Clash of Clans without perhaps considering whether they should have changed it at all. It's kind of like if you copied your friend's homework, but just deliberately made it worse so that the teacher wouldn't realise that you'd copied it. For example, there aren't any walls. Walls have always been a big topic of debate in Clash of Clans since they are very, very expensive, but I think most Clash players do agree that the game would just feel wrong without them. They help to direct the AI in certain directions and play a big part in the defence strategy. Having no walls felt weird then, and it still feels weird now. There's nothing inherently wrong with having walls in a strategy game. I mean, off the top of my head, just about all vaguely similar games have walls as a defence because they work in a different way to other defences and that helps to make the game more interesting. Nevertheless, Supercell decided walls weren't something they wanted in Boom Beach. There's also the matter of graphics. Now maybe this is a really spoilt 21st century take, but I think Boom Beach stands out as being Supercell's most boring to look at game. Defences look similar, troops look similar, and even the UI and scenery just feel like a budget version of the five other Supercell games out today. In 2014, graphics like this would have been fine, but with the huge progress made in mobile GPUs and modern game engines, the game fails to live up to the standards of modern gamers. But graphics would be forgivable if the game was really good, which unfortunately it really isn't. Another really fundamentally different part of the game which just felt terrible at the start was the matchmaking system. Instead of just clicking find a match, the raiding system worked off a map. You have to pay some gold to clear the clouds above it which would then let you attack. Now it might not sound like there's much of a difference here but there really is. This mechanic basically means you're locked in competing with the same small group of players for quite a while which means that if you've got worse troops or defences than them you're pretty much cooked. So that's some of the big issues which held the game back but there are a whole lot more. Let's do a quick fire round just to get through some more. 
Matchmaking is determined pretty much solely by your VP or trophy level, so it's easy to end up stuck with bases you shouldn't really be up against. They have been trying to fix this, but they've been getting a lot of criticism. You also don't get any rewards unless you flatten the enemy base completely. It takes way, way too much time to progress since you've only got one builder, unless you pay £3 a month and then you can get an additional builder. But that's a very pay to win feature so obviously a lot of people got annoyed by that as well. You can be attacked several times whilst away so when you come back you basically have no resources. This means if you want to upgrade something you need to do several attacks just to get back the stolen resources before to get back to square one. But wait, if you want to train troops at higher levels, it takes super long and you have to sit on the game for ages unless you pay a monthly subscription and then it's really fast. So the game's pretty much impossible to play without paying at least £13 a month. Oh, and the amount of resources you get from the equivalent of gold mines is terrible. So unless you're constantly playing, you really, really cannot progress at all. There isn't really an equivalent to Clan Wars, which is possibly the best thing Clash of Clans ever did. And it's also just widely recognised as being boring in comparison to other Supercell games. In summary, you've got a game which has bad graphics, poor progression, pay to win mechanics and a less appealing concept. Unsurprisingly, the lukewarm reception after a short while led to Supercell investing less time and money into the game, which is clear, instead focusing on improving Clash of Clans and developing new, more innovative titles. I think the fact that Supercell has never tried to make another direct competitor to Clash of Clans demonstrates that they have learnt from this mistake. Unfortunately for the small but dedicated group of fans who still actively play the game, this leaves them in a bit of a tough spot. Boom Beach is the black sheep of the Supercell lineup. They rarely, if ever, spend any time on marketing the game and sometimes seemingly forget the game exists altogether and fans are not happy. I came back a few months ago but dropped it soon. Excluding the fact that this game doesn't even get a bit of support like Clash of Clans, this game feels so obsolete. Also, attacking is way harder and I feel like you almost get no loot. They try to get you to pay for everything. All it seemed was to be Clash of Clans in a modern setting. It failed to be anywhere remotely close to that, straight up boring, unfun, made by Supercell's B team, horrible art style too. So what are Supercell's plans for the game? At this point, it makes up such a tiny fraction of their billions of dollars of revenue that it's hard to see them giving it the Brawl Stars treatment anytime soon. Interestingly, Supercell have admitted that Boom Beach almost didn't get a global release. Laura Gilliland, a Supercell game lead who worked on Boom Beach, said that Boom Beach was almost cancelled because almost all of the game leads were against a global release of the game, but the Boom Beach team kept pushing and eventually they took a risk and it came out. Now, of course, game execs and leads can always be wrong. And to an extent, they clearly were since the game's got over 100 million downloads over its lifetime. But I do assume that some of the criticism of the game at the time still persist today. In my opinion, the game is beyond just needing a few tweaks to make a comeback. It would basically need to be a completely new game. The concept isn't bad, but there are way too many integral features of the game that just don't work in my opinion. So here's my prediction for what will happen to Boom Beach. I think with the recent decline in players, there have probably already been talks of potentially winding the game down now that it's hit its 10 year anniversary. I don't think they'll shut the game down entirely though, unless it begins costing more money than it makes. Personally, I wouldn't be surprised if what little updates to the game are mainly done by junior staff and perhaps a very small team of more experienced devs. In other words, I think it might be getting run off a skeleton crew. But server costs for online games still aren't cheap, so it's very possible but that within the next couple of years they do end up abandoning the game altogether. This is just the nature of business and games though. At the end of the day, games don't stick around forever, and the fact that Supercell's worst performing game has still managed to get 100 million downloads hardly makes it a failure. I also think that Supercell probably won't come out with any new games tied to the Boom Beach universe. They tried with Frontlines and that project was cancelled, so I think Supercell would be super hesitant to even think about spending more money on that franchise. Supercell's bread and butter is fun, very colourful games, and a military-based game just doesn't really fit with their new direction. With that being said, have you ever played Boom Beach? I'd be interested in hearing your thoughts on the state of the game if you do, and as always, thanks for watching.